Hello, Bristol is going to have a low emission zone. This means that if you drive a diesel car, unless it meets new strict emission standards, you'll have to pay an extra charge to drive it in the city centre. The polluter must pay. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Well, I'm not so sure. The first problem is that it doesn't actually reduce pollution. You can carry on driving your polluting car as long as you hand over some extra money to the politicians. And the other thing is, why are people driving so many diesel cars? Well, lots of them bought them because they were told they were better for the environment. You see, you get better economy from the diesel car. So you produce less CO2 for every mile you drive. And diesel fuel used to be cheaper. It's not anymore, now it's become more popular. It surprisingly costs more than petrol. Well, I think this is all a bit of a con, quite honestly. You see, the reason these cars are so polluting is because major manufacturers, such as Volkswagen, installed what's known as defeat technology on them. When these cars were tested to meet the emission standards, um, this technology reduced the amount of pollution they produced so that they passed. But in normal driving, they still produce the same amount of pollution. Well, I think I'd arrange the zone a little bit differently if it was up to me. It would be nice if instead of charging people for driving polluting cars, we paid them for driving less polluting ones. Or even better, how about when you drive your polluting diesel car into the zone, why not make Volkswagen pay the charge instead of the driver? Because they're the people who are responsible for the pollution, aren't they? It might encourage them to retrofit these cars so that they don't pollute. Because the government says that the aim of this is to encourage people to buy new cars that are more efficient and don't pollute so much pollution. Well, this is another racket. You've already spent thousands of pounds buying this car from a manufacturer. And now the idea is you scrap it and you pay them thousands of pounds more to buy another car from them. Now, I don't think that's very fair at all. It's also a fact that the most environmentally friendly car is actually the one you're driving. To scrap a car and manufacture a new one wastes an enormous amount of fossil fuel and produces a great deal of CO2. It isn't in the least bit environmentally friendly at all. So what can we do? Well, there are actually several things that we can do to reduce the amount of pollution being produced by these cars. The main pollutants are what are called uh, particulates, PM 2.5s or PM 10s. They're small particles of carbon or soot, uh, so small that you can't see them. And they, they are very dangerous. They are believed to be carcinogenic, so you don't want to breathe them in. But they can be removed by diesel particulate filters, which are exactly what their name suggests. They're filters. You blow the exhaust gas through them, and they filter these minute particles out. When the filter gets clogged, it heats up and burns them and they're expelled as harmless carbon dioxide. But what about the oxides of nitrogen? Nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. These aren't very good things to breathe either. They're produced because of the high temperatures and high pressures in the engine. When you mix nitrogen, which is 78% of the atmosphere, with oxygen, it forms these two oxides of, of nitrogen. Well, if you've ever watched uh, one of the buses going down the road, you may have noticed that they label the filler caps on the sides. Things like diesel, screen wash, coolant, add blue. Yeah, A D B L U E. Ever wonder what it is? Well, it's a mixture of 32.5% urea and 67.5% demineralized water. And what they do with it is they spray it into the exhaust where the urea breaks down and becomes um, carbon dioxide and ammonia. The ammonia reacts with the nitric oxide or the nitrogen dioxide and it produces water and nitrogen. Well, nitrogen is in the atmosphere anyway, it's quite harmless and water is okay. So the only thing you're producing is more CO2, which is not good from a climate change point of view, but it isn't as poisonous and dangerous as the nitrogen oxides. There's also something else we could do to get rid of nitrogen dioxide. It's been suggested that if you coat tiles or walls with titanium dioxide, that's the white pigment that makes paper and paint white, it's quite harmless, then in the presence of sunlight, 
nitrogen dioxide breaks down to nitrogen and oxygen, which are perfectly normal in the atmosphere. I'd like to have tested out that technology when we had the Bristol Green Capital money, but of course we couldn't get grants for that sort of thing, so we missed the opportunity. Another problem is wood-burning snows. Wood smoke is actually quite unpleasant stuff. It's got a lot of the poisons and carcinogens in it that tobacco smoke has. And there's a chap in Denmark called Press Christensen who has been looking at the smoke given off by wood-burning stoves. He examined the, uh, the smoke from particulates and he found that one cubic centimetre of smoke produced contains 500,000 particles. Now that compares to 1,000 particles in a cubic centimetre of exhaust from a modern diesel lorry. And bear in mind that the stoves he was working on in Denmark are built to a much more demanding standard than those over here. So the problem is probably much worse in this country. A chap called uh, Gary F uh, Fuller in King's College has also been looking at air pollution in London. And he reckons that in winter up to 10% of the pollution in the air in London is caused from wood smoke. So I think we need to have a look at what we do about wood burning stoves as well as what we do about diesel engine cars. Well I hope I've given you something to think about. Uh, if you like what you've heard or even if you don't please share it and if you have any questions or suggestions bishopstonbarry at uwclub.net. Bye.